I want to thank um, Cape Electric uh, Private Limited for continuous support uh, in creating the awareness. This is our 28th 28 series on knowledge, um, knowledge sharing, more specifically towards electrical safety. So most of us, uh, most of the participants are quite regular for Mr. Gopakumar's lecture on this. And I'm sure they're all well aware of uh, Cape Electric uh, Private Limited uh, capability. What I appreciate, uh, though we have multiple companies across India, Cape has taken very noble um, initiative to reach out to the uh, uh, engineers across the country uh, to how to do a best installation practices in electrical safety and many more, whether it is earthing, whether it is uh, um, new standards and codes, international standards codes. So CAPE has done wonderful work on this. And uh, again, I'm just visiting this uh, slides. Uh, this is something that everybody should be aware. 30 death every day due to electric uh, circuit. I'm sure Gopakumar also elaborate why this happens. And uh, we are very, very honored today to have uh, our speaker, Mr. Gopal Kumar. As I said, this is a 28th uh, knowledge series in association with uh, uh, Blue and Gray. We've been doing many more uh, um, webinar, basically on fire and safety and electrical. Uh, Gopal Kumar is an electrical engineer and managing director of uh, Cape Electric. Is having more than 27 years in electrical safety, lighting protection, EMI and EMC, etc. He has carried out hundreds of site studies on failure analysis of electronic equipment, so hundreds of electrical accident analysis, including major fire accident from electricity, and conducted more than 1,000 training in various countries on the subject of his expertise. He just recently returned from South Africa after giving a lecture to the international community. So he is not only addressing the our Indian uh, engineers, now he is an international uh, face on uh, standards and codes and best practices. And we are so happy to have him uh, today. And uh, he's a member of all the best possible standards and codes and uh, uh, BAA's IEC. More interesting is he's published various articles about safety in various magazines and published a book called Missing Link, which is available for circulation. So Mr. Gopu Kumar uh, uh, is, this is our, as I said, 28. So in most of the Saturday he has been doing this lecture and also uh, every week he has been addressing very vari uh, under various platforms. So I would like to welcome Mr. Gopal Kumar uh, to talk about our uh, subject of the day, that is the fundamental mistakes that we do in electrical distributions and uh, the reason for short circuit. So I go over to Mr. Gopal Kumar to take over from here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic, for the introduction. So uh, good morning to all the participants. Uh, as usual, we have more than uh, 150 participants now. Normally, all of you know so our, our webinars are uh, quite popular, and we have uh, always have 200 plus participants. Uh, so this time we are coming back uh, after uh, two months, uh, last two months, almost two months, we didn't had any much show because uh, uh, we were busy in making programs, uh, uh, direct programs. In between, we had a program for Bangalore last month uh, where there are about 150 people participated. Uh, it was uh, conducted in a hotel. Then in between... Uh, a few uh, large corporate organizations, we were doing some training programs, then some programs for electrical inspectorate uh, uh, in uh, Bombay as well as in Nagpur. Uh, and uh, in the coming week, uh, for example, the uh, programs for uh, railways is going on. And, uh, you know, so many 
uh, webinars are not webinars nowadays direct trainings are going on so we are back with our uh, 24th uh, uh, webinar along with uh, BNG, but uh, as a part of Vidyut Surakshit Bharat Abhiyan, I'm sure most of you know about Vidyut Surakshit Bharat Abhiyan. This is uh, the 126th program, starting from 30th June 2021. We conducted a lot of programs and we covered uh, so many subjects. And today, we are going to uh, talk about a subject, uh, understanding and preventing uh, of electrical fire and short circuit, of course, the basic safety. Fundamental improvement required in electrical distribution in uh, buildings. So, and uh, this time, the, we are going to talk about uh, electrical and electronic equipment safety. Equipment safety in the sense, most of the time, fire happens uh, on the equipment. For example, air conditioner. If we look at the statistics uh, all over India, the air conditioner fire alone uh, is creating a lot of uh, you know injuries and a lot of people are dying. Several cases we can uh, discuss in this particular thing. Uh, so specifically, uh, we are covering a subject which is uh, very much uh, related to electrical and electronic equipment safety. Please note that we will not be able to discuss all the subjects in two hours because if we try to discuss so many subjects in two hours finally it becomes a mess so uh, we have decided to go with uh, small small subjects in one webinar and uh, so that you know more information accurate information can be passed down so today we are going to discuss about uh, clause 4.5 of is 732 which is basically protection of electrical and electronic equipment uh, uh, from voltage disturbances, there are two subjects, voltage disturbances and electromagnetic interference. So we are going to discuss only voltage disturbance. So basically, this is the clause 44.2 of IEC 60364, protection for safety, protection against voltage disturbances. Basically, uh, uh, to ensure, these are the measures to ensure that your equipment are uh, working safely and efficiently without uh, uh, a failure. As I said, uh, most often equipment failure are creating hazards. In parallel, we also should look at the standard IEC 60661, uh, insulation coordination of equipment within low voltage supply system, part one, principles, requirement and test. Basically, I am referring to a standard which is a little bit new. 600641 is not a new standard, but I am referring to the 2020 standard. Uh, which has uh, added a lot of uh, um, special requirements and testing measures for electrical equipment or electronic equipment, which need to be made mandatory in India in order to have a safe installation. Say, for example, once when you, uh, especially for critical application like hospitals, like uh, large industrial facilities or sensitive areas, when you select uh, your electrical appliance, you have to be uh, analyze whether the equipment is satisfying the requirements of this particular standard because uh, uh, this ensures that your equipment is able to perform under various disturbances. The disturbances. So today's subject, the protection of low voltage uh, installation against a temporary over voltage. Temporary over voltage means uh, you know very well that our voltage is uh, 230 bar 400 volt. Normally, sometimes we also say 240 line to neutral and 415 uh, phase to phase or line to line. Uh, in the presentation, the voltages which I am referring to is uh, applicable to 230 volt line to neutral and 400 volt uh, line to line. Over voltages are any voltage which is higher than these levels. For example, more than 230 or more than 400. Of course, uh, up to 10 percentage or in some countries up to 15 percentage plus is allowed as a normal case. Say, for example, in India, 230 plus 10 percentage means up to 253 volt between line to neutral or line to earth is uh, a nominal, nominal voltage or the maximum voltage can be up to 253. Line to line, it can go up to 440 volt, for example. 
any voltage which is more than these limits, more than 253 or more than 440 volt line to line or 253 between line to neutral or line to earth is termed as a temporary over voltage. Temporary over voltage, if it persists for a longer time, your equipment will fail. It may create, it. its insulation will deteriorate. It may take more current. And if the protective mechanisms are not working properly, this may lead to a fire accident. Now, here we are going to talk about the three fundamental uh, safety measures which is required. A fault between the high voltage system and the earth in transformer uh, substation that supplies the low voltage installation. That means uh, the the effort on the HT side of the transformer, which is going to influence uh, the LT installation. Second one, loss of supply neutral in the low voltage system. In the sense, in case of uh, the neutral disconnection, what is going to happen? A short circuit between line conductor and neutral. So in the LT system, low voltage system, if there is a short circuit between line and neutral, of course, the other two phases are going to have uh, uh, a stress of voltage and if the disconnection time is uh, more than the specified voltage, your equipment may fail, which may lead to fire accidents. Uh, this means uh, a short circuit between line conductor and neutral. This means there is uh, a problem in one of the circuit and that particular circuit tripped, but parallelly an accident can happen in the parallel circuit. Because the parallel circuit uh, is stressed with uh, more uh, voltage for a longer duration. If the disconnection time is more, then we are actually in trouble. Most of our uh, electrical installation, you know very well that, uh, okay, before electrical installation, all of you know that uh, once when we use our uh, uh, wash basin at our house, we open the tap, wash the hand, the water goes to some kind of pit or somewhere it goes to the earth. If you use more water, often you were, uh, you know, in, in villages, you know, the water goes to the pit. And if you use more water, pit is more uh, or filled with water. So we make a, a bigger pit so that uh, water goes to, you know, more to earth. Most often, this mechanical phenomena has been applied in electrical engineering. People think that all unwanted electricity, it should go to the earth. As a result, uh, you know very well, most often our electrical safety requirements are uh, connected to a bigger earth pit, multiple earth pit, chemical earth pit, and so on. Actually, we are not going to talk anything about uh, this mechanical mind because a lot of electrical installations nowadays are designed with the mechanical ideas. Mechanical ideas, uh, if you design electrical installation, of course, uh, it won't work properly. It may create larger issues. One of the example is, you know very well that in all my presentation, I always try to explain uh, the transformer having a separate earth pit, uh, the transformer neutral having separate earth pit, two numbers of earth pit, uh, the main distribution have two more earth pit than the UPS the elevator and the equipment have separate, separate, separate. Every part of the electrical installation is connected to separate earth pit and people, engineers try to do a bigger earth pit, chemical earth pit and so on. The basic idea is uh, uh, people think that uh, all unwanted current, which is going to create a hazard in the installation, it goes to earth. If I have a bigger earth pit. Bigger earth pit, what I mean is uh, an earth pit with a very low resistance. Actually, we are not going to talk about uh, this particular phenomena. If your electrical installation is following this kind of uh, method or this kind of uh, phenomena, the further slides are not related or you cannot apply the principles written in the standard for this kind of an electrical installation where so many earth pits with the uh, uh, very low resistance of the earth electrode is immaterial uh, is applied. Of course, uh, sometimes we call this uh, uh, unstandard or non-standard installation as TT or TNS. Uh, it is neither TT nor TNS. It's a very well undefined network. So further flights are not applicable to an undefined network. In an undefined network, we don't need to talk about safety. 
because there is no safety you can be at trouble any time your equipment can burn any time so most of the installations are running without problem because you are lucky just because of luck just because of god probably the installations are working properly so this kind of undefined network please don't try to apply whatever i am going to explain in the future slides undefined networks are unsafe it can only create a trouble to you probably there is no trouble for the last 10 years because you are lucky so to start with uh, you know very well that uh, high voltage uh, damages electrical appliance this was a news recently from uh, lucknow it says uh, something happened on the high voltage side of the transformer and a lot of uh, uh, electrical appliance at uh, consumer premises burned down another case in chandigarh voltage fluctuation damaged appliance worth uh, lakhs so these are actually the problems which can be expected in any electrical installation once when there is a fault on the high voltage installation if you have an undefined network of course it's a big problem if you have a no properly designed electrical installation then these such problems are expected i am just showing a picture high voltage side of a transformer body of the transformer which is connected to an earth electrode high voltage side re you have the secondary side of the transformer neutral of the transformer is connected to a separate earth electrode you have the electrical installation there are two dotted lines you can see here this denotes a tns system and the second one denotes uh, for a tt system whenever there is a fault on the ht side of the transformer one of the classic example is whenever there is a surge arrestor failure on the distribution or in an industrial premise whenever there is a surge arrestor failure on the high voltage side of the transformer lot of equipment at the low voltage side of the equipment start burning the reason is once when there is a fault current through the earth electrode it creates a high voltage or a voltage gradient is created at this particular location this voltage gradient can be transferred to an equipment and your equipment may fail it is going to create three issues first is an over voltage a stress on your transformer low voltage winding a stress on your equipment a stress or a shock voltage between the equipment and the local earth these are the problems which are expected u1 u2 u3 in the presentation probably you will be seeing u1 u2 uf but uh, just be sure that u1 means the stress at the transformer low voltage winding u2 is the stress at the equipment uf is the shock voltage now is732 has specified under any circumstance the shock voltage in an ex, in an installation shall not exceed this particular graph your installation can be a low voltage a medium voltage a high voltage extra high voltage or whatever it is the maximum allowed shock voltage is as per this particular graph i just put it in the table within 100 milliseconds the touch voltage shall be reduced to less than 650 volt within 500 milliseconds less than 200 volt within uh, about 1000 milliseconds less than 110 volt within 10 seconds about 65 volt so this particular graph is used universally i732 you can uh, look at this particular picture what it says is against a shock the first safety measure is the shock voltage within the installation where people are living where people are working must be reduced to lesser than this particular limit you can see on the x axis the time of the duration of the fault and on the y axis you can see the fault voltage fault voltage say for example 800 volt 10 milliseconds about 100 milliseconds it's about uh, Uh, about uh, a little bit lesser than 700 uh, volt now you see this particular graph the blue color line i don't know whether it's clear to you or not probably it's clear the uh, 
IS 732, which is the code of practice of electrical wiring, as well as the upcoming national electrical code has included this particular graph. Please note that this graph is from the IEC standard uh, basic safety measure uh, shock protection standards. So uh, we are not going to include any new thing. It is uh, adopted internationally. Every electrical installation must ensure that the shock voltage is made lesser than this. Similarly, the second point is power frequency stress voltage. Stress voltage in the sense, due to some reason, at the high voltage side or at the low voltage side, a temporary over voltage is happening in your electrical installation. Number one, your electrical appliance, including the wiring, including the installation equipment, must be able to withstand certain minimum limit. And that particular limit is included or shown in this particular picture. U1 and U2 means the stress voltage on the transformer or in your uh, uh, installation. <coughs> Less than five, more than five seconds, uh, U0 plus 250 volt. I have a better table. I will show it uh, later. Up to five seconds, uh, U0 plus 1200 volt. What does it mean is uh, up to 1200 volt for five seconds can be experienced between a phase conductor and the earth in an electrical installation. This stress is the accepted level. Your equipment and your wiring must be able to withstand this particular stress. So two points. One is the shock voltage, as I shown you in this particular picture. I'm sure you are able to see the uh, limit of the power frequency fault voltage. It means the shock voltage limit. The number two, the stress uh, on the equipment also has to be limited to almost this much level. It also means your equipment is able to withstand, say, for example, up to five seconds, 1,200 volt. When you buy an equipment, when you know that your equipment can withstand only 1,200 volt plus 230 volt for up to five seconds, you must ensure that the voltage which is going into your electrical appliance due to various reasons are limited to a level lesser than this. Otherwise, your equipment may fail. So there are two things, uh, higher than five seconds and less than or equal to five seconds. This uh, depends on the high voltage supply, whether the high voltage supply is earthed, solidly earthed or impedance earthed system. Not very important now because I have a, a better slide which uh, I will show you. Say, for example, you, are, you have an electrical installation, something like this. You have a transformer from the public utility company. The public utility company, the body of the transformer, including the surge arrestor, is connected to an earth electrode. Then there is a neutral earth electrode. Both are interconnected or both are close by. Let's say, for example, both are uh, near uh, uh, maybe one meter, two meter away. So electrically connected earthing of the high voltage system and the neutral of the low voltage system. Whenever there is a fault on the transformer high voltage system, once when the fault current goes through this particular earth electrode on the ground, a voltage gradient is created. Now, the important point you should think is the complete low voltage electrical supply is referenced to the neutral and the neutral is connected to the point with which the energy or the fault current is dissipated, the high voltage fault is dissipated, which is having a potential gradient. So what happens is the phase and the neutral is referenced to a point A. Let's, let's say, for example, the fault current is uh, 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 5 kilo amperes and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the earth electrode resistance is, let us say, 5 uh, ohm. So 5 kilo ampere into 5 ohm, approximately 25 kV will be the peak of the voltage gradient. Now the line and neutral are stressed or referenced to the 25 kV. That means the line and neutral are at 25 kV, whereas the body of your electrical installation is connected to an electrically separated 
plays as a result of this one is that uh, zero potential basically between the body of your equipment and the phase and neutral conductor you have a voltage stress and if your if your equipment is unable to withstand this particular stress of course your equipment is going to fail we are going to look at uh, these uh, voltage limits and some of the techniques which can be applied or which is recommended in the standard to get rid of uh, this particular problem the other issues are the first issue is a high voltage fault the second issue is the loss of neutral in case of a loss of neutral loss of neutral is nothing but from your between your house and uh, your transformer, uh, the transformer supplying energy to your uh, electrical installation. If there is a, a neutral disconnection, the other two, some of the phases may experience a voltage between phase and neutral, you may experience a voltage up to 1.73 into U0. So approximately about 440 volt or 400 volt can be experienced. The phase to phase voltage will be applicable under this condition in your single phase electrical equipment, depending upon what equipment you switched on, depending upon uh, what kind of equipment are connected to the other phases. Basically, uh, two phases will experience uh, this much voltage to the respective neutral. And if this voltage is not disconnected before certain time, of course, your equipment is supposed to fail. The third <coughs> issue is. Sorry. <clears throat> the third issue is stress voltage in the event of a short circuit between line and neutral. In the low voltage wiring, once when there is a fault between line and neutral, <clears throat> the voltage between the other line conductors and the neutral conductor can reach up to 1.45 times. Uh, uh, U0 means 230, 1.45 times of U0 for up to 5 seconds. So basically, I put uh, these stress voltages in this particular table. TOV is creating failure in equipment in TTTN system. Type of fault is the high voltage fault, for example. <clears throat> 1200 volt plus 230 volt up to 5 seconds. Uh, this is applicable between line to PE, means uh, the protective earth. Uh, applicable for a class 1 equipment. Of course, because class 2 and class 3 equipment doesn't have uh, a protective earth or doesn't need a protective earth. So L2PE, class 1 equipment, your equipment must be able to withstand that particular voltage. 250 volt plus 230 volt uh, for a time greater than 5 seconds, line to PE, applicable for a class 1 equipment, your equipment is supposed to withstand that particular voltage. So basically, your equipment is supposed to withstand the two conditions mentioned here, the both the voltages 1200 or 250 plus 230 volt, of course. The electrical designer or the energy supply company shall ensure that the voltage is limited to a level lesser than this. Don't cross 1200 volt it should be lesser than 1200 volt then only the system will work they have to make that particular arrangement in case of uh, an industrial installation the electrical designer shall ensure that uh, the voltage applied to your equipment is limited to a level lesser than this particular stress voltage this is number one number two when you select your electrical equipment you ensure that your equipment is able to withstand these voltages. So on one side, your design ensures that the voltage is limited to less than 1200 volt. On the other side, your equipment is able to withstand 1200 volt up to five seconds. So by this method, you are able to achieve safety. Please note that this is applicable to between line to PE, line to earth. Loss of neutral is between line to neutral up to 440 volt can happen for an unlimited time of course this time unlimited time it depends 
it is number one applicable for a public electricity distribution system you have to report uh, the problem to the electricity board somebody may come uh, after an hour or probably after two days uh, to rectify the mistake that is why i put unlimited time generally in uh, developed nations uh, this kind of uh, the voltage the time restrictions are given in the standard say for example 10 minutes or 30 minutes not more than that but if you have this kind of a system in order to safeguard your equipment please note that this is applicable for both class 1 and class 2 equipment the only chance is to disconnect the supply there are voltage relays available you can put a voltage neutral disconnection relay is available you can put a neutral disconnection relay and you can trip your uh, shunt trip or you can put a contactor and trip the supply so this is the uh, safest method but uh, technically speaking in an industrial installation this kind of a situation is very very rare of course for uh, public distribution this is especially public distribution overhead line this condition is quite normal also in public distribution if the if the joints are not proper then uh, you know such problems are uh, expected the third issue short circuit between line to neutral please note that this is applicable between line to neutral the first two are between line to earth the the third one is uh, between line to neutral up to 335 volt for five seconds uh, you can expect uh, a, a temporary over voltage between line to neutral both for class one and class two equipment and here your equipment must be able to withstand the stress voltage so if we leave the second case the loss of neutral in an industrial environment or in a in a critical environment like a hospital or a data center or or bms or or instrumentation system you should ensure that equipment operating with 230 volt or 400 volt is able to withstand a 335 volt between line to neutral for 5 seconds it must be able to withstand no compromise on that similarly the second one for example 1200 volt plus 230 volt between line to earth applicable for a class 1 equipment your equipment must be able to withstand you also should ensure that your design should be made in such a way that the voltages are limited within this tolerable voltage and duration what i have mentioned if the voltage and duration if the if the design is not taking care of it of course more voltage comes and your equipment will be in trouble this five seconds comes from the disconnection time disconnection time is established in the standard you can see here tn system first of all there is an electrical network there is a transformer as i told i am talking with 230 400 volt system kilowatt hour means the point of commencement of supply up to kilowatt hour it is the scope of uh, the electricity supply company if you have uh, a public distribution system of course if you have your own transformer then uh, uh, if from the high voltage side onwards it is uh, in under your scope applicable for industrial and commercial premises in the fixed part of the electrical main distribution circuits uh, the disconnection time maximum allowed is uh, in case of tn system 5 seconds tt system 1 second the load circuits the final circuits uh, 63 amp pocket outlet devices or 32 amps fixed equipment the disconnection time specified or made recommended in the standard these are the maximum recommended time please understand in tn system 0 0.4 second in tt system 0 0.2 second actually the five seconds uh, of say for example uh, in a line to neutral short circuit uh, 335 volt which is shown in the previous slide say here line to neutral short circuit 335 volt five seconds line to neutral applicable for class 1 and class 2 equipment it comes from the disconnection time of tn system 5 seconds but please ensure or please be sure that these time in the main distribution circuit up to 5 seconds is recommended for the safety measure called as protective equipotential bonding and automatic disconnection of supply here 
protective equipotential bonding means the metallic parts in your building are interconnected in such a way that uh, there is no fault voltage or the fault voltage is limited to a level lesser than this particular limit and uh, if you are not uh, making protective equipotential bonding then of course this 5 second and 1 second is not applicable you have to go for the time which is of course uh, specified in is3043 220 volt fault you are supposed to disconnect within 0.17 second so this time which i am showing is from is732 but please note that these disconnection times are applicable for the safety measure called as protective fault protection is achieved by protective equipotential bonding and automatic disconnection of supply if protective equipotential bonding is not carried out then the disconnection times are quite faster similarly in the electrical installation voltage impulse withstanding capacities or insulation coordination is also an important subject insulation coordination in the sense we are using different kind of uh, electrical Uh, equipment and components in our network starting with the meter then we have a main switch then we have uh, sub switches we have the bus bars we have the meters we have the wires we have the switches sockets and the fixed installation and we also connect uh, 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 some of the socket outlet devices we connect uh, some appliances so here this part of the electrical installation is categorized into three mains incoming fixed installation number 2 connected device number 3 category 4 category 2 category sorry category 4 category 3 and category 2 this means the electrical appliance used at the origin of installation or point of commencement of supply must be of category 4 example a 230 volt equipment 230 volt between line to neutral equipment must be able to withstand 6 kv 6000 volt voltage impulse withstand means a surge voltage of up to 6 kv these equipment are able or supposed to withstand at the fixed part of the electrical installation fixed part of the electrical installation charts to say for example your main distribution board your cables your sub distribution board your switch socket your light fittings your fan these are fixed electrical installation so all the fixed electrical installation up to the socket we are supposed to for the purpose of equipment safety we are talking about equipment safety for the purpose of equipment safety the equipment used in the fixed installation must be of category 3 means a 230 volt equipment must be able to withstand up to 4 kv voltage impulse voltage impulse is nothing but surge voltage it is a, a classified example of testing once when we go further into the next two three slides you will be able to understand what i am talking fixed part of the installation for example your fan light fittings and so on a class 1 equipment there up to 4 kv it is able to withstand if i ask the question are we checking this parameter while buying our uh, uh, electrical appliance for our house of course most of the time we don't then the connected equipment connected equipment uh, to a socket uh, must be of category 2 230 example 230 volt application must be 2500 volt what does this mean is in the electrical installation we are going to have some big equipment we are going to have some medium size equipment we are going to have a little bit smaller equipment with respect to its insulation we are going to also have sensitive electronic equipment the sensitive electronic equipment comes under category 1 for example a surge voltage of 1500 volt now the most important point which we should understand is is732 means the iec60364 used as a wiring regulation globally in europe in britain in america all over the world the wiring regulation says in your electrical installation 
you must see that the a- equipment are able to withstand a certain voltage and in the fixed part of the installation category 3 connected equipment category 2 and category 1 equipment you are not supposed to connect directly to a public lv supply not suitable for direct connection to a public lv supply public lv supply in the sense the power supply you are getting from the utility company a low voltage power supply you are getting from the utility company whereas in an industrial installation if you have the power supply as a high voltage uh, supply let's say for example 11 kv or 22 kv system and if you have your own transformer then the situation is a little bit different your system design should ensure that the voltages these stresses are minimized to a very very low level now this categorization is very important if we are not able to select and erect the the equipment according to this of course unnecessary voltage stress goes into your equipment your equipment's insulation will fail or degrade insulation degradation will lead to failure of the equipment and if you look at from the previous slide the disconnection time if the disconnection time is not met of course your installation will be in fire so basically the voltage stresses are creating uh, insulation degradation after some time your equipment is failing and at that particular time the supply must be disconnected by the protective device and if the supply disconnection is not happening of course then uh, an accident happens how can you see this parameter in the manufacturer's catalog you can see i'm showing uh, an uh, 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 mccb catalog overall voltage category according to iec 610101 category 4 this is a, a multimeter you can see here uh, Miko multimeter on uh, somewhere safety. It is, uh, you please note that it is written on the safety part, safety, double insulation and uh, 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 category 3000 volt uh, DC, category 4 uh, 600 volt uh, AC and DC. Say for example, here category 3000 volt AC DC, category 4 600 volt AC DC. What does this mean is you can use this meter if the operating voltage is up to 1000 volt in a category that means not at the main distribution board not at the point of commencement of supply after the point of commencement of supply you can use this meter up to 1000 volt ac and dc at the point of commencement of supply you can use it up to 600 volt ac and dc of course where this 600 volt ac dc is applicable maybe is the question which comes to your mind yes 690 volt is used in several industrial application say for example all the wind turbines the large wind turbines which is working in india more than uh, uh, 200 300 kilowatt onwards nowadays the wind turbines are even 2 3 megawatt so all these wind turbines the connected uh, line is at uh, 690 volt face to face so if we take this particular multi- multimeter it says for that particular application you cannot use this multimeter that is how it is similarly this is an mcb over voltage category 3 another mcb from the same manufacturer over voltage category 4 very simple to understand the first mcb over voltage category 3 you cannot use at the point of commencement of supply if you wanted to use the MCB at the point of commencement of supply, you have to use uh, this particular model, which is, uh, of course, even a bigger one. These four categories are specified uh, in IS732. There are four categories category 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is 6 kV, 3 is 4 kV, 2 is 2.5 kV, and uh, 1 is 1500 volt. But uh, please understand that. Uh, category one devices are not for direct connection to a low voltage power supply now if you look at uh, a control panel say for example in an industrial environment you have imagine you have a class one control panel 
class one control panel this one the red color one is the main power circuit 230 400 volt uh, power circuit that means the power is coming it is doing something probably at sub distribution and it uh, it goes out uh, to the load probably to to some drives or whatever then uh, you also can have an auxiliary contact you can also have uh, SELV or PELV extra low voltage supply into the control panel. Now, if you have a control panel in this fashion, what we should ensure is between the main circuit and the auxiliary circuit SELV, PELV, number one, there must be a physical insulation, physical separation. Between the auxiliary and this particular SELV and PELV must be installed uh, within the double insulated uh, part of the insulation. Means that mechanically, the SELV and PELV circuit must be insulated. This also means in case of a problem on the main circuit, the, the, uh, a person who is working on the SELV, PELV or on the auxiliary circuit are not uh, uh, getting electrocuted. While installing this particular uh, panel or while designing the electrical panel, you must uh, understand, the panel manufacturer must understand and look into the standards uh, about the location where the panel is going to be installed, uh, about the impulse withstand of that particular location, basic insulation between different parts, the requirement of basic insulation, double insulation to SELV and PELV. You must understand these requirements and make the panel in such a way that it is satisfying the overall requirement. Say, for example, for basic uh, and uh, uh, insulation, insulation coordination standards are there, 60664 part one. I'm just showing some of the uh, part. This is applicable for an equipment. Let me read it. Basic insulation and supplementary insulation of solid insulation shall be designed to withstand the following temporary withstand over voltage. Short term temporary over voltage U0 plus 1200 volt with duration up to 5 seconds. Long term temporary over voltage U0 plus 250 volt with duration longer than 5 seconds. As I said, this is between line and the earth. The panel board has to be made in such a way that it is able to withstand uh, the control panel. It is made in such a way that this is withstanding these voltages. Now you have uh, something working with uh, SELV, let's say 48 volt DC. You have to have uh, basic or supplementary insulation. The performance uh, validated by the uh, validated uh, can be declared by the manufacturer as a rated temporary withstand uh, over voltage value. The manufacturer, while designing the panel board, he has to consider these points and he has to, uh, the, he has to declare the performance of these uh, values. Reinforced insulation shall withstand twice the temporary withstand voltage specific, specified for basic insulation except when partial discharge test is used. So basically what I'm trying to explain to you is every apparatus, every equipment which we are using in our electrical insulation, it is supposed to have a certain voltage withstanding levels. Example of a control panel I'm showing. You have a control panel with a main power supply with the uh, uh, SELV, PELV and auxiliary uh, contact. Now, the standard recommends that uh, the insulation levels between these items, uh, these uh, various, you know, uh, uh, class one part of the equipment and SELV, PELV, for example, the basic and the supplementary insulation of the uh, solid insulating material which you are using must be able to withstand this much voltage and the manufacturer should declare the value. This is the fact uh, which is included in the standard. Now, if I ask the question back to uh, the industry, what I have found is most of the industry, uh, especially say for example, control panels or instrumentation, BMS, most of the places, uh, this information is uh, uh, quite new for the engineer. They really uh, often sometimes don't know. I'm only putting an example of a control panel. This example can be put for several applications, several uh, uh, load, several equipment we can put. Uh, basically, the equipment manufacturer are supposed to make this as a part of the installation. Recently, I came across uh, a, a particular installation. It was a control panel imported from Germany for the OEM. 
and now the oem thought that uh, the cost of import or cost of manufacturing in germany or in europe is let us say for example 2 lakh rupees and the engineer uh, uh, in india counted the number of components inside this particular panel and he told that i can make this panel for 1.5 lakh so about 25 percentage lesser at a 25 percentage lesser cost we are able to make this particular panel in india that was the argument but then the panel was made and this particular test is completely ignored and then this panel is exported back to another country and very simple they rejected the panel and it came back so the applicable uh, technical points you should take care of in this case is clearance creepage distance solid insulation dielectric test uh, uh are often disregarded in designing and testing in our uh, electrical installation and uh, basically if these points are taken care very well your equipment is able to withstand the voltage the stress voltage there are two points one is the stress which is applied to your equipment must be limited to certain level number two your equipment must be able to withstand a certain level this level is here which is written u0 plus 1200 volt between line to neutral up to 5 seconds or in the previous slide which i have shown you now electrical separation electrical separation is a protective measure in which uh, basic protection is uh, achieved by uh, basic insulation fault protection is achieved by simple separation of separated circuit very simple to understand you have the incoming you have an isolation transformer with the isolation transformer the secondary side of the circuit you are isolating as a result of this uh, electrical separation lot of uh, problems which is existing at the input side of the isolation transformer can be solved at the output side but as i said earlier if your equipment withstanding levels are unknown to you then this simple separation also may not work at the output side of the isolation transformer for shock protection it system unearthed systems are recommended i'm sure most of you know that uh, there are some news in the media there are some videos in the youtube which says uh, Uh, an young entrepreneur or an young company has invented a, a shock proof panel and they demonstrate that after putting this particular special panel even if you touch the live conductor phase conductor nothing happens to you or even if you touch uh, some of the live part there is no shock it's not a magic it is called as isolation simple separation you use a small isolation transformer you separate the uh electrical appliance now the purpose of this uh, explaining this particular subject is the is732 make some recommendation the recommendations are this protective measure say for example simple separation first of all uh, at the output side you can go for it or tns system in case of tns system of course the safety measures for tns must be implemented in case of it system this protective measure shall be limited to the supply of one item of current using equipment supplied from one unearthed source with simple separation the electrical separation is uh, first of all recommended for one current using equipment one of the example is solar pv the inverter of solar pv or say for example an ups because the ups rectifier part of the ups is unable to withstand uh, some voltage or unable to withstand uh, because it has got sensitive electronics you make an electrical separation as a result you ensure that your uh, equipment are able to withstand it. when more than one item of current using equipment is supplied from an unearthed source a simple separation the requirement of annexure c of is732 shall be met for example all equipment uh, meet uh, the basic protective measure live parts are insulated completely uh, and the, it can be applied for voltage up to 500 volt uh, separate wiring system is required if you are not using separate wiring system then you have to take care of some of the mechanical uh, uh, damages which may arrive and you know special 
requirements are there. The exposed conductive part of the separated circuit shall not be connected either to the protective conductor or exposed conductive parts of the other circuits or to the earth. It means you are having an isolation transformer, which is technically called as electrically separated circuit. Output of the isolation transformer, you are going for a, a, a unearthed system called as IT system. You have enough number of electrical appliances connected to this separate electrical supply. Under that condition, the air thing shall not be connected to either the protective conductor, the exposed conductive part of these equipment, means the body of those equipment shall not be earthed. It shall be floating. These are the requirements. Now, some of the application which uh, we can see is uh, solar PV, especially the inverters which is used in solar PV, the UPS and so on. We can apply this technique to several uh, uh, electrical appliances. As I said, uh, there are some claims which is coming. Uh, somebody invented a panel, a black box, which is protecting against uh, all the problems uh, or against shock and all. Uh, it is nothing but uh, electrical separation. Now, there are some products which is claiming some unnecessarily or unrequired, not at all required uh, uh, specifications. Say, for example, products creating trouble in an installation. One of the product which is uh, which already created trouble in the market and which is going to create more trouble in future is digital grounding system or digital grounding. If you Google, you will be able to find out uh, more information. Digital grounding system, the companies claim that uh, this equipment is directly from the guard. It saves all your electrical safety problem. It saves all your uh, equipment problem. It will. It is a static charge eliminator. It reduces neutral to earth voltage. It detects surges and converts it into heat energy. Uh, equipotential bonding is done. Electrodes, earth electrodes are not required. And whatever the electrical uh, trouble which you think in your uh, mind, there is a solution with this particular device is the claim of the manufacturer. What they do is there is a plastic box. Three small wires goes into the plastic box, 2.5 square mm wire. There is a 63 amp MCB. I'm showing you one of the case study which I made. There is a plastic box with three LED lights. A lot of MOVs are connected according to the manufacturer. And uh, there is a bus bar, a large bus bar. You can see here, there is a large bus bar. All the outgoing equipment, the nearby equipment, the protective earthings are connected to this common bus bar. Then the claim is this device is the, 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 the device which is going to solve all your problem. Actually, what happens is internally, these companies are shorting the neutral and the earth. By making a short circuit between the neutral and the earth, the potential difference between neutral and the earth has been made zero. But this equipment will create a lot of problem. The neutral current, the partial neutral current will flow through all over your electrical installation. And this device is going to create a fire in other circuits, not in the connected circuit of this particular device. Probably the connected circuit of this device doesn't have any problem, but other circuits are going to have serious issues of failures and fire. If my request to people, those who are using it or those who are going to buy this particular uh, device, please think twice before buying this. Uh, uh, let me use a, 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 a word from not from the dictionary. It's a nonsense. Please don't use this uh, electrical nonsenses. And it is a complete violation of safety measures in an electrical installation. Digital grounding device could create serious safety hazard in the parallel circuits. Neutral current can circulate throughout your building and it can create a lot of a problem. Please understand that the electrical, uh, the, the safety regulation, uh, uh, the, the CEA regulation measures relating to safety demands uh, one mega ohm insulation resistance between neutral and the earth uh, within your building. If you install this kind of a device, that's gone. So the operation of this device, I don't want to explain. 
So with this, uh, I make uh, the conclusion. Electrical accidents are often uh, from uh, faulty equipment. Of course, from faulty wiring also it happens. From loose contact also it happens. So we have to uh, find out uh, each and every, or we have to treat each and every problem in a different way. Uh, Sometimes the, the solution for loose contact may not work for uh, uh, over voltage. Sometimes over voltage solution may not work for a loose contact. So we have to find out the actual problem and rectify it. Uh, often the failures or the accidents are due to faulty equipment. Often safety measures are uh, impossible due to wrong design of electrical installation. As I said, the wrong design of electrical installation, one of the classic example uh, is uh, here, uh, the, the separate, 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 uh, unclassified or undefined networks are used uh, all over India. Recently, I even saw an installation. There are so many earth pits uh, in the factory and uh, each of the earth electrode in soil, they have made a barricade. All around the earth pit, there is a metal barricade. So, and they claim that uh, we are uh, making additional safety for earth electrode so that the people are not going near to the earth electrode and nobody is touching the electrode. So, these undefined uh, networks, of course, uh, is uh, a danger. While selecting the equipment, we ensure that the equipment safety measures are fulfilled, especially in critical applications like hospitals and industrial system. Uh, in residential, of course, it may take some more time for such kind of uh, equipment to come out, but uh, industrial and uh, especially hospital areas, already the, the equipment are there. But uh, what I wanted to tell you is if you go for a cheaper device, of course, uh, you may not uh, get these things. Uh, equipment are deteriorated, uh, resulting uh, in accident if you don't take care of uh, this uh, device. So this is the conclusion. Now I would like to take uh, take you to a different subject. All of you are aware that we were taking classes for almost uh, one and a half years. More than 20 or 24,000 people are have participated in various programs with the Surakshit Bharat Abhiyan as well as the webinars uh, uh, conducted uh, along with uh, BNG. A uh, lot of uh, participants uh, started asking, uh, you know, why don't we start an association? Because for electrical engineers, there is no uh, no association, an All India Association, uh, to take care of uh, the, the increasing the knowledge levels or increasing the the, the uh, electrical quality of the electrical installation. As a result, uh, last few months we were thinking of making an association. Finally, we decided to make it. And the association is called as uh, National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety. The association is almost to be registered. Probably uh, within uh, two days, the registration will happen. So the uh, purpose of the purpose of the association is to improve the quality of electrical insulation, create awareness, skill development, and improve safety measures. Uh, support. Uh, uh, CESC, the, the uh, electrical, uh, you know, the, the uh, chartered electrical safety engineer, uh, uh, various state governments are implementing chartered electrical safety engineer. Our uh, association, if it works well, can support engineers to become chartered electrical safety engineer in a good way, in a knowledgeable way. Work on new technologies such as uh, solar and uh, uh, electric vehicles. And then... Uh, a very important subject, facilitate accreditation system for engineers and provide better employability. Accreditation system in the sense uh, globally, qualification by a government agencies are uh, ruled out. Uh, now uh, the ISO standards are recommending to go for accreditation system. The association can become an accredited agency so that the association members can be accredited by the association for various jobs such as designing, erection, testing, and so on. We can also support uh, in standardization, R&D, and uh, test laboratories. With this mind, we started uh, an association, of course, not only me, along with me, several uh, people or several engineers are there. So we request you to become a part of uh, the association. Of course, you will get uh, intimations very soon. With this, I would like to stop the presentation. If you are interested to listen to me or if you are interested to hear anything about the association, you can write to me by email or by mobile phone. So gk at kpindia.net or 996252244. With this, I would like to stop the presentation. Over to you, Mr. Dominic.
Thank you, sir. Congratulations. What a great news is the need of the our National Federation of Engineers for electrical safety. So, as you said, there is no federation or a forum or an association, non-profit uh, association for electrical engineers. We have association for electrical uh, equipment manufacturer, but not practicing engineer, we do not have the platform. Uh, so what a great news. And uh, it's, I would say the biggest uh, Diwali gift by Mr. Gopak Kumar or by uh, the set of uh, engineers who decided. So it's a gift to the nation, a national federation of engineers for electrical safety. And what I like that uh, facilitate accreditation system for engineers for providing better employment. Yes, we don't know who's qualified, who's certified today when you do an employment. So I'm sure it's a great movement. It probably would say revolution that is happening in the country. And, uh, you know, our prime minister keeps saying, you know, self-reliant uh, India and uh, um, what do you call that? Um, it's a movement that we can create under the prime minister's uh, uh, guidance and the Ministry of Home Affairs. So I we will come back to you more detail about uh, 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 the society, and I'm sure this will be launched uh, uh, very soon in the month of June. Uh, that's the target that I'm looking. And uh, congratulations again for Gopukumar to give a great gift to the entire engineer community as a Diwali gift. But make sure that you have a very safe uh, celebration during Diwali. And let's move on to the questions uh, uh, that is been there in this uh, question box. So we will try and conclude uh, by 15-20 um, uh, minutes. Uh, that's a target to conclude at 12.30. I'll quickly go on to the uh, important question. Is it possible to say residual current device can prevent a fire? This is from Esther Tamiz. Yes, of course. Uh, if we are talking about uh, earth leakage, uh, earth leakage also can lead to fire. If you have an RCCB of uh, 300 milliampere, the RCCB will protect uh, from fire due to earth leakage or earth fault. But uh, it doesn't mean that the fire is always from earth leakage. Fire also can happen from several other reasons as well. Under sizing of the wire, loose contact, line to non-disconnection of a line to line or a line to neutral fault and so on. Uh, RCCB is applicable in case of an earth leakage or an earth fault. Thank you. So next is the Ramesh's Banerjee. How to find, is it called UO? That is the UO, the, uh, uh, the nominal voltage. UO is nothing but the nominal line to neutral voltage, 230 volt or 240 volt. Hmm. So Ullas uh, is asking, loss of neutral due to burning of natural conductor. Neutral. Was, uh, neutral neutral conductor. Sorry, neutral. Uh, conductor because it was undersized, led to burning of hundreds of LED lamps in furniture uh, furniture shop in uh, Mumbai, which recently investigated. So he's given the he's giving the reason for why there was a fire in Mumbai. So thank you, Ullas, for elaborating that. Uh, next question is Kalyanapuram Gopalan, where the Rajan, how to check the integrity of lighting arrest uh, lighting arrest. Yes, uh, uh, also Mr. Ullas had added that uh, this uh, problem, for example, uh, what he has mentioned, uh, uh, which is, uh, he has investigated uh, in Bombay and hundreds of LED lamps in a furniture shop uh, got burned. Of course, it's, yeah. if it's a furniture shop, then <laughs> really danger, very dangerous. Uh, such things are happening because there is no engineering done during installation, no sizing of conductors, uh, uh, which is leading to fire, uh, very you know unsafe situation. Now the question from Mr. Varadarajan, uh, how to check the integrity of lightning arrester? Of course, the IEC 62305 or IS IEC 62305, part three and part four explains the method of uh, checking the lightning protection system. Uh, I think it is in uh, in part three. It is in class six or seven. I don't remember the class number exactly. We are supposed to make a verification. 
verification of the air termination system verification of the down conductors and the earth electrodes including the verification of spds so you must refer uh, to 62305 we are already doing it i think it is one of the main job which we are doing regularly thank you for the question so arun is asking could you please elaborate on creepage distance yeah, it is uh, basically, how do I reply? Uh, it is the physical distance, uh, physical uh, distance through the surface of a, of a uh, uh, metal. Let me just show you a picture. In what you are seeing is the, uh, the, the reduction of required creepage distance by using, uh, you know, the creepage distance. For example, this dotted line. Imagine you have one terminal at this place and another terminal at this this place on uh, on the two side of for example the single rib so the physical distance from one terminal to the other terminal through the surface of the insulating material that is the creepage distance so i hope it's clear well Harun, you got a right answer and with the graphical display for your question so let's move to srikanta pradhan which place not to use MV voltage. So the creepage distance uh, the definition is uh, shortest distance along the surface of a solid insulating material between two conductive parts. I repeat, shortest distance along the surface of a solid insulating material between two conductive parts. So let me go to the next question. The uh, next is asking, uh, explain about ELR. Uh, earth leakage relay yeah. okay uh, mr balaji for uh, rccbs uh, modular uh, din rail mounted rccbs are available up to probably 63 amps and uh, for higher uh, rating uh, the, we have to use uh, the cbct and the earth leakage relay the method of working is almost similar, similar the cbct basically it's two devices the core balanced current transformer measures the residual current and the earth leakage relay senses it and it trips the uh, shunt trip of your protective device. So let's move on to Ramakant Sharma. Sir, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Ramakant Sharma, who is a regular to our webinar and uh, he also uh, has his own group and he promotes our webinar within his group. And I want to thank uh, Ramakant Sharma. Uh, uh, for supporting uh, all the series of webinar and uh, his question is are there agents in india who do electrical safety audit for lv application in public area <laughs> actually last few years uh, i was doing it regularly but these days i stopped doing it because people think that uh, i am more trouble than uh, giving a solution because uh, my eyes, uh, I can find out a uh, lot of mistakes. So then there is a force uh, for me to reduce the, the report. Uh, don't write this part of the report, don't write that. Uh, and I'm trying, you know, people try to, uh, you write only this, this problem, don't uh, try to expose. So because of that, uh, sometimes I stopped going, <laughs> making this uh, audit and we have a team uh, to do it. Our engineers are doing it. So we can do it. OK, uh, Prabhat uh, Kumar kindly share the link to join uh, the association. Yes, of course, uh, I know all of the members who joined today. And as I said, there are 28,000 uh, audience that we touched uh, uh, during this last one minute of year. Uh, all are welcome. And I'm sure your knowledge in areas of your interest can be shared. And we will share you the link to join the association very soon. So uh, we'll go to Ram Ramashis Banerjee. Uh, there are two questions. I will uh, I'll take one question because uh, we are running short of time. Uh, why two uplink is provided it for transformer neutral and uh, neutral? Uh, Mr. Banerjee, uh, this is uh, the misinterpretation. Nowhere in the standard or in the regulation, it is written to provide two separate earth electrodes for a system. Unfortunately, this is uh, a misinterpretation of the standard or the regulation. Uh, 
now your second question tt or tn uh, is reliable of course uh, tn is subdivided into tnc tncs and tns uh, tns uh, for industrial premise and the tt uh, of course the, the regulation or the rules in india do not recommend the tt but of course tt is also a safe uh, system both are safe it depends on uh, the kind of um, uh, safety measures you are implementing in these uh, systems and he is also asking how to stop uh, providing multiple earth pits mal practice is a, of providing multiple earth pit how do we stop more education uh, creating more awareness about the correct methods of safety this is the only way mm -hmm. which we are regularly doing so komal uh, uh, duria is asking to separate p conductor and n conductor do we have to run two separate conductors on the earth pit no you have to run two separate uh, conductors one for neutral and one for uh, pe conductor uh, both has to be connected to the neutral of the supply transformer not to the earth pit both the pe conductor and the n conductor shall be connected to the neutral of the power supply and the neutral of the power supply shall be connected to the uh earth depending upon your application if it's public distribution yes of course to the earth electrode if it's a large industrial application to an earth grid so this is how it is so durga durga prasad shet is asking what is the difference between floating neutral and earth neutral floating neutral means there is no reference for the neutral the potential bit to the neut between neutral and the earth can be any value it is uh, earth to neutral means the neutral is connected to a reference so the potential of the neutral with respect to the reference is zero very interesting question from suresh babu under what conditions body of ups or a solar inverter should not connect to earth yeah i think that the presentation is misunderstood what i explained is if you have an electrically separated system connected to several load more than one load means uh, let's say you are connecting to 10 equipment under that condition you don't need to connect uh, the body of your ups or solar inverter uh, to the earth whereas uh, if you have only one equipment uh, the system is little bit different you can connect so if you are talking about a solar inverter which is a single equipment connected to an isolation transformer of course the body of the uh, the the solar inverter can be connected to the pe conductor mm -hmm. okay kasim sheikh suppose we don't have proper earthing from utility provider can we install our own earth pit near the house is seen uh, this practice in villages yeah if the utility is not providing the earthing connection then we are supposed to go for a tncs network we are supposed to use the neutral of the power supply as the earth fault return path tncs uh, you can see this in the clause 5 of uh, clause 4 of is3043 as well as in the regulations uh, uh, 14 15 and 16 Prabhat kumar singh kindly elaborate the temperature created by short circuiting between phases of 415 volt bus bar at human distance of 1 foot temperature created by short circuit between first of all once when the once when there is a short circuit uh, happening between two bus bars why a human being is uh, going near to it you are not supposed to open a panel board which is in live condition it has to be enclosed the bus bars must be enclosed inside uh, uh, a, a, a uh, a physical separation so the chance of somebody going near to a fault itself is wrong so number two if you are uh, uh, opening a, a live bus bar and if you are trying to do something and under that condition uh, if there is a, 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 a temperature or an arc of course <laughs> the person will die you have to use proper ppes instead of rather than trying to find out the temperature the best way is uh, number one don't open a live part and don't try to work on a live part this is illegal number two in case of emergency if you are doing something of course you have to use proper ppes that is the correct way uh, suresh babu again um, shall neutral of isolation transfer be connected to earthing 
No. If it is connected to Earth, then it becomes a TN system. If it is not connected to Earth, it becomes an IT system. No need. I am uh, saying this answer with respect to the previous question which Mr. Suresh Babu asked. Uh, Mr. Deshpande is asking, what about hazardous area classified uh, EXE and EXD switch gears? Vendors are refusing to conduct high voltage and impulse voltage tests. They are saying, being these panels are ATX and ICECX certified, so no need of HVR impulse test and also temperature rise test. They are not doing this test. Is it correct? Yeah. Normally, if they are approved by ATX or ICEX, then these uh, tests are included in the standard. So if a, a product is already tested, of course, these tests are already made. But please note that nowadays the laboratories are a little bit flexible. The laboratories are able to do the test as per the customer's demand. Imagine I am giving a, 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 a standard which says 100 tests according to uh, standard X, 100 tests are there. But I can tell the laboratory that uh, I, do, I don't want to do all the 100 tests. I want to do only 10 tests according to my, my requirement from the standard. So 90 can be eliminated. So you should check whether all the tests as per ATEX and the uh, uh, necessary IEC standards are made. If those are not made, you can ask the uh, vendor to supply as per, you know, you have to check the test report and find out whether all the tests are carried out. Uh, the uh, You can also, uh, if you can give a case, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, history, I can also check and let you know whether uh, the uh, certificates include the impulse test or so. If, the, uh, if anybody refuses to do this particular test, uh, this is wrong. So, Balaj is asking how much load we require to use ELR? The CBCT and ELR, probably that is a question. Uh, uh, there is no nothing like a load uh, situation. Uh, normally, uh, for example, if you have a fixed installation uh, and if the fixed installation need to be protected against fire, a 300 milliampere disconnection is required. And if the load is, let us say, for example, some kind of furnace which is operating a higher uh, current, probably you can use uh, ELR. There is no restriction that uh, up to this much load you should use ELR. It depends on the kind of the application. So, Krishna Kumar, can you provide the list of tests that are required to conduct MCC and PCC? Mm, yes, this, can, this is actually included in the upcoming National Electrical Code. Uh, I don't remember the test, uh, the name of the, okay, the name of itself, I forget. Uh, there are several, starting with the insulation resistance, there are several. It's so, there on the part one, uh, section 17 of uh, the upcoming National Electrical Board. So, Mr. Ramakrishna is asking to address loss of neutral protection over voltage modules which can be added to incomer MCB are available in the market. Not very popular. Eaton and Legend, uh, Legrand provide these modules. I think this should be popularized and made mandatory. It's a suggestion that Correct. Uh, what Mr. Ramakrishna says is correct. Uh, the neutral disconnection relays are available. In case of neutral disconnection, the relay trips the supply. So, Mr. Marutesha, already we have different earth system now. How to regularize? So, how to regularize the earthing system? Uh, you should analyze or the, the you should uh, uh, appoint a consultant who is uh, strong in the subject. He has to analyze the kind of earthing system which you are using and uh, you have to modify it. So, Ullas, many installations I have come across isolation transformers where neutral and ground conductor are shorted. Does this not violate the standard? Uh, isolation where the neutral and the ground conductors are shorter. No, it it is not a violation. If you if the neutral at the output side of the isolation transformer is earth, then the output side becomes a TN system. You can use a TNS. You can make a TNS system. The secondary side neutral must be connected to the common bus bar 
the bus bar which is the inco- along with the incoming power supply you get the pe conductor and you must connect the secondary side neutral to the same pe conductor so jesus is asking why most in why most in construction project installed a thing if no a thing installed what will happen actually the question is not uh, clear to me uh, all uh, all uh, installation earthing is uh, mandatory but uh, the problem is uh, don't think that earthing means earth electrode earthing means a conductor which is uh, for the fault return and the conductor's potential must be equal or similar to the earth potential so that shock earthing means uh, equipotential bonding probably we can think in this way earthing doesn't uh, or earthing has little to do with the uh, earth electrode in soil so every oh, installation uh, must have uh, earthing means equipotential bonding so will us suggesting type testing depends upon the agreement between supplier and buyer so is uh, complementing the answer that we gave so we move on to jay kumar gupta in the two more questions we have Recently, there was a serious fire in a 220-volt UPS system for thermal power plant equipments and Ramagundam. Having 295 kVOH alkaline batteries of 1.2 volt and 450 kPH, majority majority of batteries charged. Can you please elaborate on probable cause of fire? Also. you can uh, can you facilitate in investigating this cause of fire jay kumar gupta uh actually the question is not very clear whether the fire has started from the battery or uh, from the uh, from the inside the ups or whatever but we can help you in uh, uh, investigating the cause of fire you can uh, please send a mail to us we will help you in this case so this is the last question mr dominic you are on mute i think okay the last question and there are few people are raising their hand they want to come on line and uh, live and interact with you let's try this and balaji's last question thank you excellent okay uh, thank you mr balaji for complimenting the effort of mr gopak kumar and we will continue this uh, sessions and uh, uh, we will be in touch with you uh, and uh, who are those people who are raising his hand okay mr appa uh, mr dominic if you can uh, uh, make mr appa to speak uh, yeah one second i'll just come there go Inspe- to the from the uh, attendees okay is raising the hand uh, devasi appa um, yeah, i will uh, allow allow to talk sir now you can uh, uh, you 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 can speak to uh mr gopakumar apa sir please yes, come on yes thank you sir thank you thank you for allowing me uh, yeah. first of all i would like to uh, thank uh, mr dominic for organizing this and mr gopakumar for delivering an important area uh, of subject uh, sir uh, of course i would like to thank you for the uh, nfe creation for this country it's a very welcoming one and we have to be a part of the uh, system to correct it uh, that is an important of uh, nfe and i would like to uh, supplement some points some people have uh, raised uh, doubts on neutral and air connections that can be taken up separately because this arises because of uh, sensitive equipments and ups air thing especially we have to deal with the separately derived system concept as per is triple e Uh, 110 which is nothing but uh, tns uh, uh, being put on in another way of for easy understanding that can be dealt with separately and another thing series arcing in the arc flash uh, we are concerned with uh, short circuit arcing due to short circuit or just for or that leakage but there are some series er- uh, at fault for which the uh, correct uh, addressing that system is using arc flash devices that's also an issue and another thing uh, regarding hv test of uh, transformers i would like to say that uh, regulations provide uh, acceptance of manufacturer stress certificate with regard to the high voltage testing because uh, it is expected that 
a high voltage device cannot be subjected to frequent test. It is something like uh, stressing, putting over stress on the winding. So once the manufacturer provides that we can accept, the regulatory authorities are empowered to accept that LC test certificate, provided it has got some in the accreditation and they have some uh, uh, standard uh, accreditation system of this country. This is what I would like to add supplement to Gopas. Uh, today's uh, seminar and I would like to congratulate Gopa for his uh, sincere attempt in bringing uh, unity among all engineers at the national level and to, uh, to clear uh, the uh, what you call to make more transparency and to make the system effective and to be uh, supporting the enforcing authorities with an ultimate aim of uh, removing hazards and putting an end are minimizing the fire hazards or electrical hazards in this country. I congratulate you, sir. I, my best wishes for you to come up with this novel initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You are always a, a support and an inspiration to us. Most of, uh, you know, I really started learning because of you or because of you. I started because of you. So you are the guru. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And Mr. Appavu is also supporting very much in the association. Making the association. Thank, Thank you. you. We will bring it up. <laughs> Great, sir. I think Debbie's. Um, uh, yeah. Debbie, sir, are you yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it I'm audible, sir? Yes, sir, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gogumar, sir, after seeing you after a, a long time, and uh, Mr. Dominic. It was an excellent technical session. And uh, coming to the point now, because I have so many points to ask, but and I know the shortage of time. But missing link, you have uh, put it very uh, perfectly for your a book because of loss of neutral uh, and that is a uh, majority of the cases accidents happen because of this in particularly LV system. So coming back to the point where you talked about uh, substandard control panels. Now we, uh, from my experience in the industry, it is L1 because the lowest price and then you get a lot of uh, panels manufactured by the substandard suppliers. How do we, uh, is there any, I, I know it is not uh, an easy way to control, but uh, this categorization of and insulation level. So can you give an insight to this, uh, how to take care of this particular thing? Uh, sir, first of all, uh, it's, it's actually a complex uh, scenario. Uh, right. Most of the users uh, are negotiating for the cheap product. The right. whole story starts from that. Nobody looks into, seriously looks into what quality is uh, required. Rather than that, uh, what uh, the cheapest, uh, who can give the cheapest. As a result, uh, the, the derailing of the quality starts there. Right. Number two, the, uh, the uh, engineers, those who are in the R&D department of, I know a lot of companies, those who are, they are, they are uh, you know, sometimes um, trying to copy something and trying to, uh, a real R&D is not happening. In the name of R&D, copying and uh, uh, reducing the cost uh, is uh, sometimes meant as R&D in a lot of companies, which is not uh, absolutely correct. The only way is to have a common standard for everybody. Everybody should follow the same standard. Compare Apple to Apple. As a result, uh, there is nothing called one is expensive and next one is cheaper. Everybody is on the same platform. We have to pay price for a quality. Right. Slowly we are slowly. Uh, also, sir, the uh, next point is uh, these are carried out by engineers because of non-awareness. Non-awareness is also one of the reasons. If uh, people are aware that these are important points uh, which uh, changes the scenario, they will follow. So we have to create awareness. See, there is Thanks. a. Uh, uh, I mean, just to bring it one more point here. Uh, actually, what happened in the con uh, LV system, the control panel, people take it granted that okay, it is LV, so I can go with any manufacturer. And unfortunately, there is a place where everything, the uh, the bomb sits and then start fire. So uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So thank can you. we have uh, Aprabad uh, also to come online and uh, speak to Gopakumar? Uh, thanks for your time and valuable uh, uh, information you have shared during your conversation since last one hour. Okay, so in continuation to our uh, my last question regarding uh, short circuit temperature faced by one person 
just sitting at one feet. So the person was working on MCC panel. Okay, that MCC panel was completely isolated, but it was its incoming bus bar was live. Okay, unfortunately that uh, your sfu got sorted and uh, hence your uh, incoming bus bar was uh, received a short circuit current and person was injured due to short circuit voltage temperature okay so can we imagine that particular time what uh, temperature he must have received uh, actually it is, it's very difficult to Oh, imagine to calculate. We can calculate, of course, but if you are talking about the temperature in the conductor, you are going to create a failure in your equipment. Of course, it depends on the insulation. For example, XLP insulation temperature has to be maximum 275 degrees centigrade and so on. But I don't know whether you are talking about an arc or you are talking about a temperature on the conductor or uh, whatever. I would request a pause or also to have you. Uh, uh, if you have. Uh, actually, as you said, the exact temperature is not only the criteria because in every electrical arcing, the temperature go up to sun's surface temperature. It can be of uh, order of five times the sun's surface temperature. Several, uh, that is not measurable. But the duration is an important thing because in lightning, the phenomenon ends up in microseconds. And in uh, relay clearing, fault clearing, OCPDs, it may go up to uh, less than a second. So it's a duration and the fault level available. Uh, we can't uh, clearly establish the exact temperature to which it has been, the, the person have been subjected to. It all depends upon the uh, blowing away of material because copper, even a steam, a water can expand uh, 2,000 times that, uh, its volume. You imagine the copper molecule getting expanded during arc and splashing on the face of the operator. So this is quite uh, impossible to establish a correct uh, temperature that depends upon the uh, conduction, radiation, as well as the proximity of the person. That's why people provide, propagate uh, use of PPE devices, etc. Regarding short circuit, as you said, it can depend upon the uh, material selection because SLP or PVC. PVC can be dangerous than SLP because SLP by itself can uh, extinguish or become fire resistant. But PVC can become uh, exposed some more fire hazards as we even toxic uh, smoke that come out. So these are the things that we can uh, see in uh, another thing. Uh, I've forgotten now. Uh, I would like to add one more point that uh, the the fab products you have mentioned about the fab products. It's a vital thing that engineers should be aware because in spite of uh, the stringent provision in the act, there is in, there should be a three month imprisonment or one lakh fine. It's there for such any violation. But is it practically happening? So we people have to empower, we have to support in the developed world, the uh, NGO organizations are supporting these structural authorities in such a way that in a developing country like ours, India, we have to support the structural authorities in empowering them and punishing such product producer users. That's my opinion. Sir, I want to also inter you know, intervene here. Rajiv Kumar is asking with they want electrical audit. Everybody knows Mr. Gopakumar and company uh, does uh, audit for a lot of uh, installations and industries and all that. And his mail ID is already saw, uh, shared. So if anybody is interested to do a fire audit, uh, please send a mail to Mr. Gopakumar and he will take it further. Continue this uh, knowledge series, as Mr. Gopakumar said, we will do more of physical. If you get uh, good positive support from people from across the cities, that and you know, that's not just participating. If we can join hand and say we will uh, get the right people uh, in that city, we will uh, uh, like to do it in Mumbai and uh, other cities too, uh, where we can involve the electrical inspectorate and. Uh, have a panel discussion and all that. 
So we will keep on doing this um, uh, physical event also what for the period. I think Kerala is due. I think one we should do uh, with the support of Davis uh, sir. I think we should do one in Kerala. So we will uh, uh, conclude this session today, and I will ask Mr. Gopakumar to give his concluding remarks. Uh, and I'm more excited that he is gifted to the whole nation with the formation of an association, and um, we will have a grand. Uh, launch of the association very soon. No, over to Gopak Kumar for concluding remarks. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic. Uh, actually, the idea of this association came from uh, mostly from the uh, engineers working in the electrical inspectorate. I have been traveling and meeting uh, engineers from electrical inspectorate throughout the country for almost two years. And they are the ones those who are really supporting. Uh, because there is no forum for them to 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 discuss this subject. Of course, uh, it all started because of uh, our uh, online programs. Uh, I'm sure that uh, if we do the association and if we run it, uh, you know, for getting this accreditation, uh, it is at least uh, it will take two to three years. So that means uh, a tough work during the first uh, two three years. And if we are able to succeed it, uh, it will be. Uh, uh, great achievement for the engin engineering fraternity in the country, electrical engineers especially. So thank you very much, and thanks for all the participants. Uh, let's meet uh, next month again. Thank you. And those who want to visit the previous um, webinars, uh, please visit uh, uh, CAPE uh, the website, which we again, on SOL website, there is blog, and you can see all those recorded uh, webinars are there with the link. So. Uh, uh, Kumar Bole was asking for the link, it's available. So, looking forward, happy Diwali to everyone. Play safe and uh, enjoy your long weekend and holiday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to all. Thanks to all. Bye bye. Bye bye.